the fans fucking build my life. And if I can do something for them, I'm really happy with that. We have uh, 97 songs on Spotify. It's no big deal. That's the one thing I know how to do. Actually, in, in your brain, it's a mental uh, um, place. Everyone can end up there. I think a whole lot of people being there. We have finished a record. I actually don't listen to the Greenland Wellfishers music often, but um, I think that Lubuil is uh, the record I have uh, listened most to. The funniest thing was um, the local newspapers wrote bad lyrics, shit, 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 and there was a New York uh, newspaper wrote at the same time. The best lyrics is Bob Dylan's Highway 61. But Lovable actually made the um, um, whole world explode because we could travel. We have only been focusing on Norway and what we can do in Norway. Irish punk music is not a big thing in Norway, so of course you can play live. But this really exploded. We got the opportunity to go around in a lot of country in all over the world. It started in England and Italy, Poland, Czech Republic, then Japan, uh, Germany, United States, um, Ireland, you name it, uh, Switzerland. Uh, I think Global will um, actually made us understand that we could play any country in the world. And that was a big kick, I think, for every band member, because this was not about Norway. And it was important, we were going to re release albums, everything, because 
the world was waiting for us. sat down in the rehearsal room. We had a list, everyone had a list of uh, which songs to, to record because the band, of course, had played for many years and had a lot of songs. They all could fit in the, into the album, but uh, we could not, of course, uh, record all. Maybe four, five, six songs uh, everyone agreed on. I know that um, the, the first, the single Johnny Lee Roth was one of the songs everyone uh, agreed on. When you are going to record songs you know very well because they have been played live for, for uh, many years. Uh, you, you may get some preferences to what <coughs> you enjoy playing, not necessarily to what is going to be a, a good recording. The most important thing was, even in his studio, he was allowed to smoke. Yeah. Happy times. Happy times we did. And we got the smoke back then. <laughs> oh God, I miss it so much. <laughs> wow. Roll on. Fucking love this stuff. Roll on. Read your paper back. Hold on, take your arm. How's he got it? That kind of tape, no, okay. Uh, <laughs> Dominelia. <laughs> he said a dickhead and you said a dickhead. <laughs> What's that? Cut the tape. Дико всех приветствую. Продолжаем экскурс по норвежской музыке. Следующая группа, которую я представлю, была прислана также Каджелем из Норвегии. И называются они Гренландские китобои. Если я правильно прочитаю, то называется Greenland Wild Fishers. Так вот, когда я их увидел, фотографии есть сзади, мне напомнило это некую группу Хим или им подобное. Но, как оказалось, эта группа очень сильно напоминает известную группу Pogs из Ирландии. Любителям фолк-музыки будет очень интересно познакомиться с творчеством вот этого коллектива. Поэтому рекомендую, если не приобрести подобный релиз, то хотя бы найти его в интернете и послушать. I'm a songwriter, and uh, for five years we didn't record anything. To me, it was so depressing, boring, depressing. But a couple of the members didn't want to record anything, but they quit. Actually, I think uh, Longwell was um, when we got new two new members at that time. We decided that um, we were not going to put money in our own pocket where just everything we earned from gigs were going straight into the band again. And then we could release uh, the album. It should have been a double album because I had that many songs. But this producer, he was uh, very fine tuned with his ears, so he never was satisfied with uh, the pitch and the fiddle. So I had a lot of struggle to to get accepted. <laughs> Man, it takes. We 
which my comrade he's my brother in crime. He organized everything. Without him we would be stuck in Norway. He promotes the bomb, he uh, believes in his um, idealist. Oh. He, he's uh, not um, doing it for earning money, it's all about what he believes in. Which Tons of respect for that guy. Noble Whale, Green and Whale Fishers, original signed copy. Dutch release. Japanese release. What an album. I first heard Loboville, the band were on tour in the UK, I think it was 2001, and they were playing it in the van, because it hadn't come out at that stage, it, they, these were the mixes, they were all listening to the mixes on the tour, and it was just so fabulous, I mean I loved the early stuff, the, the first album and the singles, but this, this was just a step, in, uh, an, another step like, like in, their, in the progression of this band, it would go on and like still be going like 25 years after they first started and very much like uh, the Ramones and this album is dedicated to Joey Ramone and uh, the similarities are, are there because I know like Arvid's a big Ramones fan and uh, the thing about the Ramones was they had a formula they stuck to and it worked and each album um, was similar but different you knew it was a Ramones album um, but but there was something slightly different about it and the, the Green and Welfishers do the same thing uh, you will always know Green and Whalefisher's album. They're just fabulous. And I want to say that I hope that the Green and Whalefishers are still releasing albums in 20 years. And I hope that I'm still alive in 20 years to hear them. Okay, thank you for asking me to speak. And Slán Go Fól. When Tusha came up with the intro, we lived at the same dorm. At that time, later at night, it was a song. It's strange because uh, I remember at the time you had an other tune that I liked much better than uh, Noel. And suddenly, I'm not sure if it turned off the pace on the song or what happened. And suddenly, I think, yes, this is a very good song. <laughs> Very first time the world could hear Agnes singing. Uh, I think it's a great uh, tune, except the fact that I had to sing. <laughs> <laughs> Two parts in a song. That's important. Mm, uh, just to tell us, um, it's a folk, it's rock and roll. Uh, I used to listen to bands like Yes Rotter, Tennessee. I think the idea was a steal a little bit from both. Oh, it gave me a very, very fucking difficult uh, guitar riff to play. Uh, that was on uh, John Lee Roth, which is uh, David Lee Roth's cousin. Luckily, this was the, our first digital uh, uh, recording. So the producer managed to, to cut, copy and paste my toast and put it into the right places. So it, uh, on the record it sounds very good actually. <laughs> It's about the band members. It's about um, the band members. Uh, uh, yeah, I totally would waste them. The song I hate the most. I thought it was a funny thing, but uh, 20 years later it's embarrassing. <laughs> Susha did a great banjo work.
song is about what happens to um, a person who is um, very solid and strong and the life falls apart. A crack. I guess you all know the book Prozac Nation. Describe it very well what happened 20 years ago. Yeah. So love was at that time a medication that I guess about a hundred thousand Norwegians was into it and uh, it was very hard to get off. Um, I had a couple of friends committed suicide on the way off. It was not a friendly drug. Don't want to talk about it anymore. Part of the song. I'm a Norwegian and my English is not so good, but I thought that what the fuck you was a good line. <laughs> <laughs> what a good thing to sing, yeah. <laughs> Um, a special song. It was written in my mother's house. I didn't have a guitar. She got an organ. And I can't play keyboards. That's why it's so long in the same chord. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, from the start with, with the organ till the last word was written was about two hours. 20 years after, that's maybe my favorite tune of the world album. <laughs> so I was on the bus, piece of paper and a pen and it was a fucking queue. Lost for half an hour and I wrote it somewhere on the bus. You're fucking alone. Maybe go to a pub. You never get some friends. Being alone? Absolutely about being alone. Dreaming about being some other place? Dreaming of stay close to someone. It was a song we maybe played for two or three years. Right before the recording, I made this intro. And I think that was a good thing to do with the song. A song about the coincidences that shape lives. Do not trust yourself. You're never safe when you're around. 
feeling and that people love you and that you are in a kind of family community. Some people will be around you in difficult times. Thank you. 